Uh, up there on the screen, let me get my deal here real quick. If you remember, a few weeks ago, God laid it on my heart. I did not necessarily tell everybody what it was that God was dealing with me about, but it was about feeding people, literal food. And so um, I kept praying about it. My initial thought was to feed people in our local area. And so I brought it up to Brother Michael and um, I mentioned something about feeding hungry people. He got on the phone with this young lady right here. Everybody see my little circle there? That is Kister. She is uh, Michael's cousin. She works for our ministry and our radio station there. So Michael talked to her, and we found out that there are people in Turkana, people in Samburu, who go without eating food. And it's simply because they don't have any food to eat. It's one of the poorest areas uh, in Kenya. It's one of the poorest areas in the world. There are a lot of poor people in this world. I understand we cannot feed them all. But because we can't feed them all, does that mean we should not feed any at all? No. And so, and I, I understand that. I wish, to be honest with you, I wish that I would have won that billion dollar lottery um, that would go to feed a lot of people in this world and um, so anyway my only thought the only thing that God led me to was to feed people not that so that they would start coming to church or that they would start listening to our radio station or whatever it was simply this is what God was laying on my heart to do so when I found out that there were people who are within the broadcast area of our radio station in Turkana that do not eat every day because there's no food for them to eat, that broke my heart. And so I told Michael, I said, we're going to budget uh, somebody, and I want to say this, that one person in this church, one person in this church that knew the need gave $500. One person. That fed 287 people for a week. A week. $1.75 per person. Now there was over 300 people that were there. And I found out that they, the, the, the particular people that they were, they sent forth the elders first, the oldest ones, to get their week's worth of food. They had rice, you know, they had uh, corn and beans. That sounds like a good meal to me, cornbread and beans, amen? It's a different kind of cornbread, but it's cornbread nonetheless. So they sent the elders first, and then they sent the widows, which is right. I'm glad that it was in their heart to do it that way. So the elders, and then the widows, and then those that remained, and apparently we had to turn some away because we just ran out of food. So we want to do this again before Christmas. Okay? Now, I am not asking anybody for money because if God is in it I won't have to God will lay it upon the heart just like he did this one person God will lay it upon the heart of the people that he wants to bless so I am kind of using language a little bit he wants to bless them and they will give what God allows them to give if God is in it and it's God's idea, then God is the one who pays for it. Amen? Uh, so up on the screen, here's the, the pictures of the people 
that we're feeding, the elders, the widows, those with small children, and they were able to eat rice, or excuse me, corn. I had it in my mind to buy rice, and we'll probably do that the next time. But the ones who are wearing the blue shirts, they work for our radio station there, Eka Yokan Radio, which means Watchman Radio, in uh, Turkana, Kenya. By the way, the Catholic Church is starting a radio station in Samburu and in Turkana, and they're calling it Watchman Radio. Now, we have that name copyrighted. They're stealing our name, and they're doing it on purpose. They want people to think that they're listening to us, but they're really listening to the Catholic Church. You see, we don't do dirty tricks like that. The devil does. Amen? So what that means is they're jealous, and I don't care. Amen? I don't care. Uh, this is what God laid it on our heart to do, and this is what we did. Uh, you see them lined up. Uh, we had security there, but from what I hear, it was very orderly, and the people were very receptive and very thankful. Uh, I have a video Michael sent me. It only lasted about five seconds, but they're singing and dancing in thanks for the food that they have. I wish I could show you that. These are, at, before we gave the food out, they came to hear a Bible study from our church that was, uh, I don't remember, I don't know if they played a video or played the audio or what, but they listened to the Word of God preached before this. And because of the interpreter, eight people came forward and asked Jesus to be their Savior. And believe it or not, they got criticized by some wolf's Jezebels on Facebook who said that they only pretended to get saved to get the food. We gave the food out for free. We were not trying to... I honestly did not think about using this to try to save people. God said, feed them. We fed them. God is the one who saves people. Not Bethel Church, not Mike Hoggard, not a bowl of corn or, or beans. God is the one who saves people. So I, I put them in Facebook prison. I, I blocked them. Because they were ignorant. They were ignorant people. Judging these people, saying that they didn't get saved for the right reason. Now, when I asked Jesus into my heart, nine years old, it wasn't because I loved the Bible and it wasn't because I loved God. It was because I did not want to go to hell. That's good enough reason. So for whatever reason, God is the one who saves them. So you pray for them. You don't know them. You do not know their names. You probably wouldn't be able to pronounce their names. But hopefully we'll get to meet them in heaven. And then we will turn and we will tell God thank you for saving all of us sinners. Can you hear God's people say amen? So, our goal is to have another feeding program before December 25th. So what I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you to pray. Pray that God will bless it. Pray that God will take a little. I mean, $1.75 to feed a person for a whole week. You could not do that here. I guarantee you. And it's very simple food. The, the corn will, will give them plenty of sugars and starch. The beans will give them plenty of protein. So it's good, hearty food. It's not like Chinese food where you're hungry after, an hour after eating. So it'll carry them. But we gave them the gospel as well. And so now I'm hooked on this. I'm addicted to it, which is not bad. So after Christmas... I'm going to want to do it again. So you pray and ask God that if God lays it on your heart to be a part of this, then so be it. And the person who was already a part of this, they do not want their name mentioned because then that steals their blessing away. Amen? So if you're doing it to get noticed, don't do it. But if you're doing it because God said, this is what I want you to do, I promise you, you will not out-bless God. Can I hear God's people say amen? 
So uh, pray for this. Pray for those, again, that are hurting this morning. Uh, Sister, um, uh, Sister Pam and Sister Linda and Sister Elaine, one of our online members, you pray for them that God would just give them grace and blessing. Any other announcements? Good to have Joe with us, not in the hospital. He was in the hospital this week. It's good to have him with us. Amen? Amen. Rose, quit beating on him. Next thing he knows, he's laying out cold cocks, laying across the bed. Rose standing over him like this. Now she says she was trying to reach him, but I don't know. Are you glad you saved? Say amen. amen. You have a story to tell. You have a testimony. You have a witness. Sing it here this morning. Let God's people hear you. Let the angels hear you and be jealous. And then tell somebody this week about Jesus. We have a story to tell to the nations that shall turn their hearts to the right. A story of truth and sweetness, a story of peace and light, a story of peace and light. For the darkness shall turn to dawning, and the dawning to noonday bright. And Christ's great kingdom shall come on earth, the kingdom of love and light. We've a story to sung to the nations that shall lift their hearts to the Lord. A song that shall conquer evil and shatter the spear and sword. And shatter the spear and sword. For the darkness shall turn to dawning and the dawning to noonday bright. And Christ's great kingdom shall come on earth, the kingdom of love and light. We've a store to, to give to the nations, the Lord who reigneth above has sent us his Son to save us and show us that God is love and show us that God is love for the darkness shall turn to dawning and the dawning to noonday bright and Christ's great kingdom shall come on earth the kingdom of love and life we've a savior to show to the nations sorrow had trod that all of the world's great peoples might come to the truth of God. Think about it now. Come to the truth of God, for the darkness shall turn to dawning, and the dawning to noonday bright. And Christ's great kingdom shall come on earth, the kingdom of love and light. Amen. This is my father's world, and to my listening ears, all nature sings, and round me rings the music of the spheres. This is my father's world, I rest me in the thought of rocks and trees of skies and seas his hand the wonders wrought this is my father's world their birds their carols raise 
The morning light, the lily white, declares the Maker's praise. This is my Father's world. He shines in all that's fair. In the rustling grass I hear him pass. He speaks to me everywhere. This is my Father's world. Oh, let me ne'er forget that though the wrong seems of so strong, God is the ruler yet. This is my Father's world, the battle is not done. Jesus who died shall be satisfied, and earth and heaven be one. And the song at the end says, Amen. Amen. Let's tell God thank you that you didn't have to go somewhere with an empty hand asking for food. God is probably has your refrigerator and your pantry full and a full belly. And we have a church that we can come to where the word of God is going to be spoken, the gospel is going to be preached. We have a lot of things to be thankful for. There's a lot of things wrong in this world and there's a lot of things wrong in this country. But it's not God's fault. Amen? So tell God thank you for everything that he's blessed you with. They can all be taken away just like that. So tell God thank you this morning for all that you have. Brother Joe Helston, it is good to have you here this morning. Would you lead us in prayer, please, sir? Bless him, Lord. Thank you, God. Father, we do ask your blessings on this offering. Thank you, God, for all that you do for us. We thank you, God, for the health that we have, the life that we have. And Father, we just give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Bless you, Brother Joe. God bless you, buddy. Listen to that song. Little is much when God is in it. Labor not for wealth and fame. There's a crown and you can win it if you go in Jesus' name. Labor not for wealth and fame. There's a crown and you can win it if you go in Jesus' name. All of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Somebody help me out with a verse. I've got a verse in my mind. and I, I know it's in the book of Revelation somewhere where it talks about them that love and believe a lie. I want to say Revelation 20, yeah, let's see, Revelation 21, maybe. Somebody help me out with that verse. Those who, it talks about those that love a lie or who believe a lie. Look for the phrase a lie in the book of Revelation. Anyway, turn to Romans 13, the rest of you. Romans chapter 13. 
very quickly before um, I begin preaching, does anybody have a word of testimony they'd like to share this morning? I just feel like God's laying something on somebody's heart. Yes, Sister Betty. Mm. Amen. Amen. You know, our great grandfathers would burn wood and cow chips. Do you know what that is? Buffalo dung. They would burn that for heat just to stay warm. We live in a blessed world. Amen. In heaven, it'll be better. We won't need heaters and air conditioners. Amen. Won't need any of that. Anybody else have a testimony? Yes, Sister Aaron. What verse? Got it. Thank you very much. Anybody got a word of testimony? Praise offering. Just want to shout something for the Lord. Anybody, anybody? Yes, John. Amen. There are some people in this world that are poor because they don't want to work. I get that. There are some people in this world, in fact, a lot of people in this world, that simply there is no work. The people who run their various governments steal, take everything for themselves, and do not rightly give to the people that they govern. And uh, so it's not everybody's fault that they're poor. Jesus said, the poor you will have with you always. And uh, so it is in my heart to take the gospel and whatever else we can give and give it to the people who do not have what we throw away in this country. You may say, well, I got my money by my own back, by working. Who gave you the back? There are people in this world who were born crippled or are crippled through life, cannot do for themselves. Somebody has to do for them. So consider yourself blessed that you were able to work and that you had a mind to work. Amen? Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Amen. Amen. You got a good family, don't you? Got a good husband? Amen. 
That was you, Edward, by the way, she talking about. Amen. All right. Uh, Revelation 22. Turn there, Romans 13. I want to look at Revelation uh, 22 first. Thank you, Aaron, for finding that verse. Revelation 22 is the end of everything, and it's the new beginning of new heaven and new earth. And if you look in verse 14 of Revelation 22, Blessed are they that do His commandments, that they may have right to the tree. Now, let me stop right here. What are the two commandments? Love the Lord your God. Love your neighbor. Who is your neighbor? Everybody is. These people here, come on, those are our neighbors. God put them as close to us as the internet is. God gave them to us. They are our friends. They are now our brethren and our sisters. And we should love them. If we would want them to help us, that's how we help them. Love your neighbor as yourself. So, uh, that's what he meant. The two commandments that we're under. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Not just say amen to them, but do them. That they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Look at those who cannot go. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters. That, by the way, that used to be all of us. Does that pretty much, that's a short list, but does it pretty much cover us? That's who we were. Murderers, and whoremongers, and idolaters. Watch this. Whoever, whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. There are reasons why people, number one, will tell lies. Number two, there are reasons why people will choose to believe lies. And I said this last week. You can lie to yourself. And the funny thing is, we end up believing those very lies that we're the ones that made them up. And we believe them like we're true. It's like deer season stories. That buck gets bigger every time. And the shot gets better that we made Every time. I had the embarrassing misfortune of having to tell everybody that deer that I got in my office, I didn't know I had it till a day later. Thank God it got down to 19 degrees like it did last night. Kept it in the free God kept it in the freezer for me all night. But I was so dumb, I shot what I thought was a doe. And it was a great big buck. And then I didn't know it until the next day, and I went over and kicked it, and I'm going, that's my deer. So God, I think God had decided he was not going to let me tell a lie about how I got that deer. I had to tell the truth. And some of you have told that truth on me way better than I've told it. I've heard the stories. But it's like a deer story. It gets bigger. It gets better. Every time we tell it. And then eventually, even though we were the ones that were there, we end up believing the own story that we made up. And that happens in a lot of places with a lot of people. So without the city are those who love and make a lie. If you look back in verse 27 of chapter 21, there shall in no wise enter into anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Two places in the book of Revelation telling us that those who make up lies and those who love lies never going to be able to enter into the kingdom of God. Do you believe the Bible this morning? Say amen. amen. Now, uh, Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13. Let's go to... Oh, let's go to um, verse 7. Romans chapter 13. Render therefore to all their dues. Tribute to whom tribute is due. You know what that means? Pay your tax bill. 
Can I hear God's people say amen? amen. Pay your taxes. I don't, like, I don't like what the government does with my money. I think most of the stuff is a joke that the government gets by with. But Jesus said, render to Caesar what is Caesar's and render unto God what belongs to God. And Paul said, render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom is due, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. I believe in honoring the flag, the American flag, not the Muslim flag, the American flag. I believe in honoring our soldiers. Amen. I believe in honoring our first responders. Amen. Give them honor to whom honor is due. Verse 8, owe no man anything but to love one another. Now, there's no forbiddance in the scripture from borrowing money or borrowing a cup of flour or borrowing this or borrowing that. But if you owe somebody, work to pay it back. Don't you dare cheat anybody out of money that you owe somebody. Don't you dare do that. Sister Pam, I love you. Sister Pam knows me well enough to know she, she brought a book written by a former Lutheran, she used to be a Lutheran, a former Lutheran who wrote a book and said, your doctrine's wrong, you believe in work salvation. He wrote this book on it, written back in 1941. And she handed it to me, and on it was a big sticking note that said, this book belongs to Pam, she wants it back. <laughs> because if you loan me something, I'll probably keep it. But she knew better. So owe no man anything but to love one another. If you love somebody, if you say you love somebody, then you'll never, you'll, listen to me, you'll never cheat them. Husbands, love your wives and never cheat her. Wives, love your husband and never cheat them. Never cheat them, never cheat on them. That's loving your neighbor as yourself. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love, verse 10. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Now, I do not believe in work salvation, but I believe in salvation that produces works. And I believe in a salvation that once God gives you a new heart, all of a sudden now, you start loving people the right way. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Father, I pray, Lord, that you'd bless the message. Help me to preach it. Help me to preach it right. Help me to do it in love. Help me, dear God, to love these people the way I want them to love me. Help me, dear God, to never cheat them, to never speak ill of them, to uphold them in high esteem. And, Father, that when I preach to them, I preach to them, Father, out of true love and not just condemnation. Help us to love one another here in this church. Help us to love people, God, that we don't like. And help us to do good to them that have not done good to us and will not do good to us. Help us to love even our enemies. Because, Father, you died for them when they were enemies. You died for us when we were your enemies. Father, forgive us for not loving people and for lying to them. Forgive us of the sin of dishonesty. And Father, help us with our motives. Help us, with our, help us to have a pure heart, we pray. Lord, just bless the message and bless your word, we pray in Jesus' name. All of God's people said. 1 Corinthians 13, 
Paul said, verse 3, and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, listen to that, we can, you can feed people in Kenya and be doing it for yourself. You can. You can give stuff away. People put stuff in this barn all the time. By the way, I want, you, I want to look at, there's a man I want you to pray for. And we went trying to find him. He came, in, he came over here, what's it, Thursday morning? As we were coming in, and everybody was saying, Dad, there's somebody trying to come in the back door. Well, I was keep it locked. And when I opened the door, this man was coming across the parking lot, and he lifted up his foot, and he showed me his shoes. They were all opened up, and old tennis shoes, old ratty tennis shoes that just had holes on them and everything like that. And he said, he said, I need a new pair of shoes. And I was, right then, I was starting to kick my shoes off. I said, what size are you? He said, ten and a half. Well, mine wouldn't have fit. If mine would have fit him, he would have walked off my shoes. But I said, he, he was asking about that barn up there. He said, I see you got a donation barn up there. Can I go up there and look for shoes? And I said, we don't own the barn. And as I was saying, we don't own the barn. The company that picks stuff up out of the barn, their truck was pulling in the driveway right then. I'm not kidding you. I said, go up there. That man's got the key. And tell him that I said, go up there and look for a pair of shoes. Now he said, he said, I have a lot of health problems. And I'm, I'm in a tent over here behind the hospital. We went looking for him that day and cannot find him. I would love to find this man. Buy him a brand new pair of shoes and a coat and food. Pray that we find, listen, the guy may have been an angel. Because I mean, he disappeared just like we don't have no way and we can't find him. But I'm just saying to you, when somebody is in need and they come to us, we're the ones who are not supposed to turn them away and saying, I hope you find your help. That just proves that we don't have the faith that we say we have. Now, am I saying that right? Though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profit me nothing. The word charity here is the right word. Because it, it, it means giving without receiving back now if you get if you put anything in the offering plate this morning hoping that God will return it to you after church come back up here and get it back out because we don't want it if you gave because you love God you did the right thing don't you dare give thinking that God will give back He's all, you're, listen, you can't pay God back all the stuff he's given you. You don't have, you'll never have the money in this lifetime to give back to God all he's given you so far. So, if you don't have, charity is, husbands, charity to your wife is loving your wife when she's mad at you. Loving your wife when she's griping and fussing. Loving your wife when she's not acting like she loves you back. You love her anyway. That's real love. That's love proven because real charity love is God giving 7 billion people in this world right now His only begotten Son and only a handful are going to thank Him for it. Charity is God feeding the people, 300, 400 million people in America, God feeding them when they hate his guts. That's charity. How did I get, I was supposed to be preaching online, how did I get on preaching ch on charity? Though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profit me nothing. Verse 4, charity suffereth long and is kind. Quit being mean to everybody. It's Christmas. Smile when you're at Walmart. Let somebody else cut in line in front of you. Listen, you're not going anywhere except for heaven, and you're having to wait on that. Amen? So let them, let them get in line in front of you. 
Let them have the 60-inch TV that you were going to get. Amen? You know what some people are? They're like a kid at Christmas time when all his brothers and sisters and cousins get all the good gifts and he don't get nothing. And he throws a big fit. Well, look what they got. I didn't only got this junk. That kid ought to be whipped. Get a whipping for Christmas. Amen? That's how some people are. You look at what everybody else has got, and you're mad because you didn't get it. Don't ask me how I know that feeling, but I know that feeling. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. Is not puffed up. Doth not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own. See, I like how it says it, it's a her. The Greek word here is agape, and agape is a feminine noun. It's a woman. Meaning, the church should be the one to show what charity really is. And if you really love God, you won't lie to God. Amen? Saul lied to God when he lied to Samuel about doing what God told him to do. He lied through his teeth. And then when Samuel told him, you did wrong, Saul lied again and said, I did not do wrong. I did what was right. And then Samuel's going, then how come I hear sheep? Because you were supposed to kill every one of them. You don't love God if you lie to God. And you don't love people when you lie to people. That's what the Bible says. Verse 6, it rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Charity, verse 7, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know, even as also I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three. But the greatest of these is what? Say it out loud. Charity. Now back to Romans 13. Thou shalt not bear false witness. It is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Your neighbor is your spouse. Your neighbor is your children. Children, your neighbor is your mom and dad. Your neighbor is your brother and sister. Your neighbor are the people sitting in the church pews with you. Your neighbor is your pastor. To me, my neighbor is God's people. It ain't right to lie to anybody about anything. I had some good people in my life tell me that if I don't have anything nice to say about somebody, don't say anything at all. And don't lie about them. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, Paul said, Thrice was I beaten with rods, once was I stoned, thrice I suffered shipwreck, and night and a day I have been in the deep, in journeyings often in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils of mine own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, and look at this, in perils among false brethren. Now I want to ask you a question. Those of you who've been around a little, who been around a little while, do you know somebody or have you ever met somebody whose testimony is, I used to go to church until I found out that most of those church people were a bunch of phonies and I just quit going and I'm not going back. There are false brethren in churches. What that means is that they pretend and they tell everybody that they're Christians, but they're not. They tell everybody they're saved, but they're not. They tell everybody that they live a holy and a clean life, but they don't. And they tell everybody that they believe the Bible, but they don't believe the Bible. They believe themselves. They've come up with their own lies about God, and that's what they believe. Do you know what, a, you know what an idol is? 
It's a false image of God. It is an image that you created in your mind of who you want God to be, and the God you want Him to be is a God that will let you live however you want to live while you break His commandments. And you don't love God. That's who false, and Paul said, we're in peril when we're among false brethren. I don't even want to think that there's somebody sitting in this room looking me in the eye that is a false Christian. I don't want to think that. I think that everybody here should be saved born again, sealed by the Holy Spirit, believe the Bible, love God, love your neighbor. That's what I want to think about everybody here. But the question that I'm asking you is, not what I'm seeing here in this room at this time, but what is it about you when you walk out these doors, who you are or who are you? Are you still saved? Are you still true to God? Do you still believe the Bible? Do you still love God and love His Word and love God's people and love your neighbor? If not, you're a false brother. And this church then is in peril because of that. Galatians chapter 2. But neither Titus, who was with me being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised, and that because of false brethren, unawares, brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty, which we see, false, pre false preachers and false brethren never announce themselves when they come in. They're never wearing a sign that says, I'm actually a, a, a born again witch. That's actually a thing, by the way. I really worship Satan, and I want you to know it when I'm sitting there. I mean, if that happens, that would be okay. At least I know who I'm dealing with. But false brethren, false teachers, false preachers usually never announce themselves when they walk in the door. They just sit here and they cause trouble. False brethren, unaware is brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage, to whom we gave place by subjection. No, not for now, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. So the question I'm asking you is, are you really saved? Are you really right with God? Are you truly repentant of your sins? Do you have the indwelling of the Spirit of God in you, which is, do you believe every word in your Bible? Let me hear somebody say amen. That's good. Now here's who you are if that's not the case. John chapter 8. Turn there. John chapter 8. John chapter 8, verse 44, I'll give you 8 seconds. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 1 took a while. John 8, 44. Read this. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. And abode not in the truth. Underline that in your Bible. The truth. There is not a truth and your version of the truth. There is only the truth. If there's one thing that I've learned in... 15, 20, 25 years in the ministry. It's that preachers get lied to a lot by church people. I've learned that. People don't say things around me that they say when they're not around me. People don't do things around me that they do with other people. They present themselves 
to the preacher falsely than they do when they're around other people. Am I telling the truth? And I'm like everybody else. I don't like to be lied to. But I've sat in my office, talked to people. One guy in particular, I asked, I, I asked him point blank, are you having an affair on your wife? No. Why are you acting the way you're acting? He said, I'm just depressed. I said, Go see your doctor. He looked me in the eye and told me that he was not having an affair, an adulterous affair on his wife. When in fact, he was, and he left her almost right after that visit. All I wanted to do was restore a brother. That's all I wanted to do. But he lied. And I can't help anybody. It's like a guy I used to know, he used to, he used to set up mobile homes. Man, he was a hard worker. I mean, he worked. He worked sun up, sun down, set up trailers, owned his own business. He smoked three packs a day, drank about four pots of coffee a day. He goes to his doctor. He's got heart problems. And I said, Carl, what'd your doctor say? Doctor asked me, do I smoke? And he said, oh, one or two cigarettes a day. I said, Carl, you smoke three packs a day. Yeah, but he asked me how much coffee I drank. What'd you tell him? He said, a cup. Carl, I've seen you. You walk around with two thermoses full of hot coffee every day. Why would you lie to your doctor? Why? Why would you lie to yourself? Why would you lie to God? The father of lies is Satan. There's no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Where did your lies originate? Where did they come from? Psalm 58, 3, the wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. When I was a little boy, I learned how to lie to my parents. When my children were little girls and little boys, they learned how to lie to their parents. And now, when we get older, we regret every lie that we told. Amen? Amen. I mean, I've never seen anybody stand over the casket of a loved one and say to themselves, well, I'm glad I lied to you. It's usually then that we're sorry that we lied and misled them because they would have loved us no matter what. Now, I was going to ask you today, and I'm still going to ask you this. Your homework last week was to come up with reasons why people lie. So I'll just go around the room, anybody that... If you know, now don't stand up and confess all the lies you told. This is not the place for it. But tell me why, in your opinion, people will either lie to other people or lie to God or they would choose to believe a lie rather than believing the truth. Yes, Trish? Because of something they did, right? Did you do this? No, I didn't do it. Okay, but I see, I thought you did. No, that wasn't me. You're saying because of shame, right? Yeah. Pam? Okay, kind of along the same lines there. They're, they're using it to keep from being in trouble, right? Yes, Aaron? They, what they, I didn't hear you. They love their sin. They want to keep doing it, right? I got that. OK. 
Okay? There's a, I've seen some documentaries on YouTube, one in particular in places in Africa, these guys in the slums, in the slums, mind you, will take every shilling they got and buy the most gaudy, tacky suit that they can get because they think it makes them look rich. And they want, they're poor and don't have nothing, but they want to put themselves out as wealthy. And it's a lie. Who else? Go ahead, Todd. Okay. I want to talk on that. Pam, you had another one? To protect somebody or to protect yourself? Okay, I got that. Follow with me in Scripture, and I'm going to give you this. Reasons for lying or choosing to believe lies. Todd said it. Pride. Pride. Psalm 119, 69. The proud have forged a lie against me. But I will keep thy pre precepts in my whole heart. Psalm 6, 2, 4. They only consult to cast him down from his excellency. They delight in lies. They love it. Because, uh, look here, they bless with their mouth but they curse inwardly. That is a false brother. That is a false friend. Have you ever had one of those? Have you ever had somebody that befriended you only to set you up? I'm getting to where when I talk to people on the phone, I'm very guarded when they start asking me questions. Because I had a guy recording me so he could catch me tripping over my words or catch me uh, changing what I said earlier or whatever so he could put it on YouTube and put me out as a liar. Well, I'm admitting to you now, live, I'm a liar. Sometimes I say things I shouldn't say. Sometimes I say things that aren't true. Sometimes I'll say one thing one day and six months later forget. That's the problem about lying is you forget the lie that you told the last time but I'm getting to where I'm guarded with what I'm saying to people on the phone or when I'm talking to them because people will call deliberately try to set me up. They will outwardly, they will bless with their mouth. And when they start in, oh, pastor, we love you. Oh, I listen to you all the time. And I just want to say up front that I highly regard you. And I just know that coming after that is they're going to try to nail me. They're blessing with their mouth. They want me to think that they are on my side. And it's a lie. Hosea 10, 13. You have plowed wickedness. You have reaped iniquity. You have eaten the fruit of lies. Because thou didst trust. Look at this. Thou didst trust in thy way. In the multitude of thy mighty men. Listen to me. I'm going to say this. Because I know it's true in this church. You think that your way is always the right way and everybody else is stupid. You think that your way is right and you think that everybody is sitting around waiting to hear your way. And that's pride. Because you trust your mind and your way and your thoughts. And everybody else is dumb for not believing you. That's pride. And people will lie. They delight in lies. They forge lies. They tell lies. To exalt themselves over everybody else. It would be like if I said, all Mexicans are thieves. Is that a true? Is that a lie? That's a lie. They're not all thieves. They're not all robbers. Not everybody that's trying to get into this country is meaning to do us harm. There are some that are. 
But for me to say that all Mexicans are liars and robbers and thieves, that's not true. I would say that to exalt myself. You see what I'm getting at? Daniel chapter 2, verse 8, the king answered and said, I know of a certainty that you would gain the time, because you see, that he's asking his Chaldeans and his astrologers, his soothsayers, he's wanting to know what he dreamed, and he's got it figured out that they're going to make something up. He said, because you think, see, the thing is gone from me, but if you will not make known unto me the dream, there is but one decree for you, for you have prepared lying and corrupt words to speak before me till the time be changed. Therefore, tell me the dream, and I shall know that you can show me the interpretation thereof. Nebuchadnezzar figured out that his astrologers were making stuff up and they were lying to him. They were lying to him, but they were his advisors because they were being well paid to do that. See, a man can pay people to get what he wants. He can, a man can pay women to pretend they love him. Isn't that why guys will pay women? To make believe that these women love me. That's why they do it. And a man can hire people to surround him to constantly tell him, Oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, you're right on that. Oh, you're right. I got to figure that a lot of rich people in this world have their cronies around them all the time to tell them how right they are. I like Facebook and YouTube for that. People will post something, and then they go back an hour later to see that everybody liked what they said. Even if what they said wasn't true, they liked what they said. And that's why we do it. That's why we not only post it, that's why we go back after an hour and look to see what everybody said about it. Now, if you're telling the truth, and you know it's the truth, it shouldn't matter what everybody thinks about it. That's good. It should not matter to you what everybody says about it and what everybody thinks about it. When I post sermons, post videos, I, I won't say I never do it because that would be a lie. Most of the time when I post something, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Sermon Audio, I don't go back and read all the comments to see how everybody liked what I said. I said it. It's on record. I believe it's true. If I didn't believe it's true, I wouldn't say it. And it doesn't matter that 50% of the people think I'm a liar. It doesn't matter if they think I'm an idiot. It doesn't matter if they think I'm working for NASA. It doesn't matter. If I'm right then it doesn't matter who agrees with it. And that's what these guys were trying to do. They were trying to exalt themselves by making stuff up to gain a position. It's all about pride. 1 Kings 22, he said to Jehoshaphat, wilt thou go with me into battle? This is Ahab. To Ramoth Gilead, Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, I am as thou art, my people as thy people, my horses as thy horses. Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, inquire, I pray thee at the word of the Lord today. Then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, about 400 men, 400 men. He's got, he paid 400 preachers to say that he was right in going into battle the next day and that he would come out the victor. That's your Joyce Meyer crowd. That's your uh, uh, Robert Schuler crowd. That's your Kenneth Copeland crowd. That's your, um, what's that big smiling guy down in Texas? I drew a blank. Rick? Huh? Joel Osteen. Listen, that man's well paid because he's a whore. He will tell you what you want to hear. He's the one lying, but you're the one that likes it. So down in verse 20, the Lord said, Who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said after on this matter, another said on that matter. And there came forth the Spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go forth. And I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, Thou shalt persuade him and prevail also. Go forth and do so. So the, I wrote an example down. God considers you a special case. He will not punish your sins. He will even make you prosperous. 
It's we will we will believe lies about God that God has us separate than everybody else that Christ didn't not only didn't die for us. He didn't have to die for us because God sa- says you're special and you worked out a deal with God separate from the cross. And God said, well, with you, Wayne, your good deeds will outweigh your bad deeds. So therefore, we don't need Jesus involved in your salvation. I'll just bring you into heaven regardless. That's a lie. And you've exalted yourself above everybody else in the world. And maybe some preacher told you that and you believed it. But you believed it. And you believed it because you wanted to believe it. But we exalt ourselves with lies. We build ourselves up with lies. We tell people what they want to hear. We tell people things about us that are not true. Sometimes we will debase everybody around us to exalt ourselves. I knew a guy who went to high school with him. He was a jerk in high school. And he continues to be so in his life imprisonment. He got a girl pregnant in high school. Married her. What was she thinking? He was the big jock in school, the big mouth. And people that knew him said when he had his buddies around, he would say to them, watch this. And when his wife would walk in, he would just basically debase her in front of his buddies. His buddies all laughing, patting him on the back. Oh, that's funny. Oh, you really showed her. He's spending, I don't know, 20 to life in prison for methamphetamine manufacturing. Good place for him. Bottom line is, you love yourself more than you love the people that you lied to. And that's why you lied. To exalt yourself, to put yourself up above everybody else. And not even the Apostle Paul would allow that to be thought of himself. And he knew that God was taking his eyesight away, causing him to be blind, causing him to be so blind he could not write his own epistles. He had to have somebody else write them for him. And he said, I got a thorn in my flesh because God will not allow me to exalt myself above everybody else. Even though I have the truth, God will not allow me to do it. And we all have the truth, do we not? By the way, we can exalt ourselves because we say, we're the ones who believe the Bible. Nobody else does. We do. Same kind of lie. Because the only reason why you believe the Bible is God chose you. Because God knows he can humble you in keeping you down where you belong on your knees and keeping you honest. I would love for people when they come into this church and visit for the first time, say... I felt like I was amongst people who didn't think they were better than everybody else. And then after they've been here 10 years, say the same thing. Buster Montgomery loved this church. Some of you remember him. He loved this church. Why? Because he felt like he was in a place where nobody thought they were better than everybody else. Brother Keith brought his wife down here knowing that he was going to die. Because he trusted this church to be honest. And we made him a promise that we would take care of Sister Pam. I made David Toomey a promise that we would take care of Sister Linda. And it's our responsibility to take care of these widows and do for them what they cannot do. And if we don't do that, we're liars. It's something to lie to somebody to your face, but to lie to a dead man, that's disgraceful and a shame. Can I hear God's people say amen?